Welcome to the Missoula Seventh-day Adventist Church. My name is Stacy Nystrom. This church is on fire for the Lord thanks to different evangelistic series that we've been holding. And we've had Jack Cologne come and as a result of that we had several people get baptized. And we've been doing the Share Him presentations. We've done two a year. And the most recent one I was one of the presenters along with Sean Day. So now I'd like you to meet some of our newest church members. My husband, Bill, works for Quest. It's all about connections, the right connections. We've done a lot of searching in between church hopping and everything. And My wife and I were, we had this dog, a shepherd dog that uh, we couldn't keep in town, and she was a good dog. And they, they do look similar to Belgian, absolutely. Yes, they do. It's all about connections. Just like these folks over here just now, we had the opportunity to, to interface over a dog. It's not often that we get to see God's hand at work in front of us and live in color like I did that day, but this is a story that I just have to relate to you, and it involves Bill and Michelle Jana Carroll. This particular story allowed us the opportunity to see a connection uh, firsthand. And those, those connections began in a grocery store, actually even perhaps before that. I've been on a quest. Uh, no pun intended, uh, but uh, ever since I was age of reason and I've always wondered uh, what the truth is, you know, I mean, is it just part? Can you just take part of the truth and take it or, or is it in the entirety? You, and I'm talking about the Ten Commandments, can you, can you just look at some of it and not all of it? and be okay or, or what. It's just always intrigued me how we could work around it. Uh, and especially the fourth commandment. Because it seemed like to me that's the one that got, that nobody wanted to talk about. So anyway, I was working in uh, Missoula and uh, I run into a roofer who was working in the same alley I was. And his truck was in the way so I asked him to move it. and. and he said, well, yeah, we can if you can find the keys. And we got a kind of a laugh out of that. So anyway, we, we developed a little friendship in a day. And, and uh, I was, he could tell I was on a journey because we talked about spiritual things. And, you know, I told him that I believed in Jesus, but I just didn't think that anybody else quite believed in him like I did. And, and I, I wasn't too sure if my thoughts were right on him. And, so he gives me this book and he said, here, Bill, I, I'd like you to take and read this if you'd like. He, he said, this author, she, Ellen White, uh, can say things a lot better than I can. And I said, oh, great, I'll, I'll read it. And I said, I just happen to have a book here. So we traded books. I had a book on Elijah the prophet. Anyway, we said our goodbyes and... Uh, I read the great controversy, not right away, over the course of about, well, it took me about a year to get through it, but it amazed me. Uh, her, her clarity, her words were, just rang so true to me. Uh, it explained things that I'd been in question about, and it's like she could take your inner thoughts that you thought you were the only one thinking it and put it on print and then give you insight onto what those thoughts, what the reasoning, and, and what the proof of it, how you could make those thoughts straighten out. It just, I loved it. And then we got that book and just started studying on it and seeing that the Sabbath was, looked like it was still the Sabbath. So we just prayed about it and asked the Lord to show us that if He wanted us to keep the Sabbath, to make it clear that we would know. Time went on and, and uh, a few things happened in between. My wife was in the grocery store one day and she met a woman who had a young child that was enthralled with the balloon that Susan was buying. And uh, Susan struck up a conversation with this nice lady and as they exited the store, there was a gentleman there with a German Shepherd and Susan mentioned that, uh, there was, that she loved German Shepherds. And the woman said to her, she says, I know someone who's needing to give one away. Would you like to 
get in touch with her. Oh, well, of course, my wife said, yes, I'd love to do that. And uh, they exchanged phone numbers. Hey, Casey, how's it going? Wow, you really have somebody to take my dog, Greta? Well, hold on, let me write her number down. Thank you, bye. We went over to the Janicaros, and at that moment, it became apparent to me seeing a, a portrait of Jesus Christ on the wall, uh, the Ten Commandments over near the kitchen table and things like that, that these were good Christian people. And, you know, we didn't even talk about Christ at that point. It was about the dog. It was about, it was about adopting Greta was her name. And, and it, was a, it was a great meeting. Well, as time went on, certainly interview and, you know, folks need to investigate, if you will, drive by our house, make sure that we got the nice big yard that we said we did and all that good stuff. And Michelle did all those things. And, and they were going to take the dog and then I couldn't give her up. <laughs> so, so we still kept in contact and they were, um, they were great people. And as it eventually turned out when we moved, Greta just, it was so hard on Greta that Rich and Susan took her, which they were tremendous, tremendous dog people. We knew from that moment that this, this, was, this, was, a, this was a beautiful thing. I didn't make the connection yet, you know, but as it turned out, we did get this dog. And then we moved back here and have like three Adventist neighbors. Prior to the evangelistic series with Jack and Dina coming to town, we had a season of prayer in our church family where we compiled lists of names that came into our mind, uh, certainly praying for his, his processes to work on us, to impress on us names that we would like to see come to those uh, evangelistic series, those series of meetings. And our neighbor Kathy, she invited us to go. And we, Gianna was just a month old, so we asked her how, how long it lasted, and she told us it was like 20-some days. And we were like, there's no way we can go that, that much. And so we, we were interested and wanted to, but we were like, nah, it's just too, too long of a commitment. So, so they started on a Friday night, and then on Saturday, Rich Rose called us. And after the first meeting, the very first meeting, Jack did such a wonderful job, and I was, I was excited. I thought, it was, I thought it was fantastic. And at that moment, Bill and Michelle's name popped into my mind, and I thought, you know, I have to call these wonderful people. I really think they'd enjoy it, and I made that call. And I hadn't talked to Rich in probably over a year, and he was just telling us how great these meetings were, and, and, uh, and I got off the phone, and I told Bill, and... I said, you know, I think we're supposed to be going to these. And he said, yeah, we are. So we started that night. We went. We loaded up our five kids and we went. They came. And it was the second night they showed up with the entire family and they didn't miss a meeting since for the rest of the series, ultimately being baptized into our church and becoming members of our church family, a young, vibrant, uh, interactive family that they are. Uh, it's been good for us to see that. Uh, you know, it's been good for our family to have that new, that, that enthusiasm. This is Gianna and all the other kids. They're at the Seventh-day Adventist school right now. There's Jasmine and Levi and Elijah and Coulter. And they started, last year was their first year. That's been a huge godsend. Um, we never thought it was something that we'd be able to do, but through the church's help and everything, we've been able to send them. And that, Bill was saying the first thing that impressed him, I think he took him the first day or I don't know if he took him the first day last year or what, what it was, but he said the first thing he noticed when he was at the school, the first thing that he saw was a Bible. And to him that was, I'm, to both of us, that was critical. And because we never, you know, we, we homeschooled and um, never ever planned on doing public school. So the church school has just been wonderful. Welcome to the Missoula Adventist Church School, Mountain View Elementary. I'm Tanya Graham. And we are so excited because we have five new students here at the school as a result of the evangelistic campaigns that we've had here in Missoula. I'd like you to meet my son, Michael Jeffrey Graham. He is an eighth grader here at the school and he has been helping with the Share Him campaigns by video recording and sound production. And come on in now and join us as we meet some of our new students. You know, my first presentation as a share hymn speaker, I was so nervous that I was going to mess up and, or, and embarrass God that I just couldn't stop shaking. I didn't even think I could talk. But I said a prayer and amazingly, um, by the time I was finished with that meeting, I noticed that I was not nervous at all until after I was finished. 
You know, if it wasn't for evangelism, our little school probably would have closed. But it hasn't. And my mom and dad really loved the Seventh-day Adventist church. They just started coming and coming to it. I really liked it too. It's just really great and fun. And I met a lot of new friends. It was just cool. And now I'm really happy that my other friend Molly, she's in that class. Molly Wilson is one of the five uh, new students we have that are here because of the new convert subsidy. And, you know, that's due to the Montana Conference pitching in and, and the North Pacific Union. It's a Jesus school. It's elementary and it's really nice and there's kind of less people. It's kind of small, but it's awesome and it's fun and you hardly get left out. Not too long ago, at a Sabbath, maybe a hmm, month ago, uh, I was in Missoula at the church and I walked out because the little girl was fussing, so I walked out and was holding her and I bumped into this guy who was at the door and I looked at him and I thought, I know him. And I turned around as I walked by him and he was looking at me and we could tell and I said, boy, I said, I think I know you. And he says, yeah, I, I think I know you too. So anyway, we got to looking at each other and talking just a little and, and I said, you're the roofer who gave me that book. He said, you're an Adventist. And I said, yes. And he said, Oh my goodness. He said, did you read that book? And I said, yes, I did. And I said, a lot has happened, you know, since then. I told him about Revelation Now and just searching. And, and I said, well, I, I, I belong here. This is where we go to church. Me and my family he says, oh man. So anyway, it was, it was Jay Smith. Five years ago, her dad, my dad gave her dad an Ellen White book that brought her, her dad, Bill, to the Lord. It was good for him, it was good for me, you know, because the truth is the truth, you know. It's, it's, it's a happy day when, when you know that somebody else knows the same truth. Not, not to be big-headed about it and so your hat don't fit, but the truth is the truth. It sets you free. Christ said that.